do we have a real national title contender on our hands in Madison? I wasn't convinced two weeks ago, even one week ago. But after the Wisconsin Badgers got a split over the number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in a rematch of last year's national championship game, there just might be something there, folks. And you as a Badger fan need to start paying attention now because the Wisconsin Badgers enter postseason play after a raucous series in Madison with Ohio State, a heartbreaking loss, a phenomenal win, a suffocating win down the stretch by the Badgers. And these two teams are destined to play each other again. I can just feel it. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack. Your only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Stunny Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Today's episode, we are joined by a regular guest once again, Noah Clark, radio voice of the Wisconsin Badgers on 1070 The Game. Just an excellent conversation. Noah is locked into this Wisconsin women's hockey team, and he's going to bring all the information that we need to know coming out of that Ohio State series, what it means for Wisconsin's national title hopes, and Wisconsin's first round conference playoff series this weekend against the St. Thomas Tommies. And you know, we we have a little we do a little rabble rousing along the way while while we're at it. That's coming up next. And we welcome back friend of the show, Noah Clark, to the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Noah, thank you once again for joining us. As we wrap up uh, an excellent regular season for the Wisconsin Badgers women's hockey team. And we look forward to a defense of the national title. Yeah, it's time for uh, title number eight to go and get that. It's going to be, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a fun ride to New Hampshire. And I cannot wait to talk about this. I cannot wait to to talk about the the whole postseason. I can't wait to you know, dive into these postseason games and starting with this weekend. Yeah, it should be an absolute blast. Uh, Before we get past it, I want to start by talking about the series that we just saw to close the weekend because it was, it was phenomenal. It was what the conference wanted to build to all year. The Saturday game was what 8 PM on the big 10 network. The conference was clearly thinking, hey, we're going to put this primetime Saturday night on big BTN. This, I think, will be for the conference title. Ended up not being a game for the conference title, but number one versus number two in the country, closing out the season with a a rematch of the national title game. An absolute blast to watch. Friday game was still fun to watch, too. Wisconsin got the lead early in that one. Couldn't hold on to it, but that just walk away with a split. Uh, and just wondering overall, you know, what are your first impressions when, when you look back on, on the series and, and some key takeaways as, as Wisconsin splits with the number one team in the country? Oh boy. There's a lot to, to unpack from this series because it was a fun series. It was a really good, a really good matchup between two powerhouse programs right now. One that's transfer portal team and one that's a team that's basically an international team, like, a, like mm-hmm. an international powerhouse. Wisconsin is, and the fur, you know, the the two games that we were that, that we were blessed with were both spectacular. Game one, spectacular. Game two, even more spectacular, just simply because the Badgers won. Um, the key takeaways from this game, I think, was Wisconsin showed some fight. They 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 showed really some fight. You would say, you know, you look after game one and I was sitting there after game one thinking it's going to be a very rough game two if they don't get things going. And then game two, they go down to nothing. And it's just like they didn't they didn't get it going. No, (laughs) they, they they didn't get it going. And it's like this team has to show some fight like they've got to show some fight at some point. And Casey O'Brien gets the scoring started and then it just trickled off from there. And Ended up being a fantastic game for Wisconsin. This team, I think, is showing once again that they are one of the top teams in the country. They didn't show it game one, but they really came back in game two in those last two periods and really showed that, hey, you know, 
we're going to play too. You know, we could play too. Yeah. You know, you think that Ohio State, you're the big dogs of this conference and of the country. Well, you've got seven national championships, and we're going to show you why we have sat seven national championships. Yeah, I, I want to dig in there a little bit on, you know, the last two periods of of the Saturday game and you pull in the Friday game. And I think that was kind of a theme throughout the weekend was that both teams dominated certain 20 to 40 minute stretches of these games. Uh, Wisconsin came out of the gate and although lost on Friday, came out of the gate, got the first goal and, and really dominated that first period. Wisconsin had the first 13 shots on goal in the game overall, didn't allow Ohio state to get a single shot on goal for nearly 13 minutes of that first game. And, and I think that was a big credit to the defensive side for, for Wisconsin really collapsing and not letting teams, you know, set up uh, anything offensively for the Buckeyes, because there are some other games that Wisconsin plays against some of these lesser teams, in the WCHA uh, Bemidji state, St. Thomas Mankato, where Wisconsin will a lot of times just suffocate teams with its offense and just not allow those other teams to get anything set up. But there was a fair amount of play in the neutral zone and in Wisconsin's defensive end that just didn't translate into any shots on goal that I thought was really impressive. Of course, then Ohio State kind of suffocated Wisconsin the rest of the way in that game after, you know, the Badgers get 19 shots on goal in the first period. But then the next night, Ohio State really dominated that first period overall, getting 17 shots to Wisconsin's four. This was just in back and forth affair, but through different stretches of domination. And I think that those stretches of domination by either team is where I saw, like what you said, that Wisconsin really is a, a, content, a contender here. And there were stretches where I didn't necessarily think that was the case. I came out of Friday night with my doubts. I came out of the first 20 minutes of Saturday with my doubts. But the way Wisconsin dominated in certain points in time just really shows, I mean, the country, as a reminder, like this program hasn't gone anywhere, even though Ohio State is, you know, a little bit of a new new blood in this conference. Yeah, and Ohio State really showed it game one, but game two, like that was really kind of the Badgers to take, to take care of business. And really, I think the other thing you want to look at is too, is the offensive chances that they were getting in that second period, like Lacey Eden, like the, the pass that Lacey Eden made to Britta curl mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. spectacular, but it was only spectacular because it was a two on one situation yep. earlier in that first period. And in the game before they had those two on one chances and they went past the puck. They just usually would take the shot in this, in the two goals that they scored the one to tie it and the, and the one to take the lead, both were two on one situations. And, both of them were, and both of them, the times they passed it. So yeah. it was really kind of impressive for what, uh, for what Wisconsin did. Like those situations were so big and, and so huge. And especially against the two goalies, like Rain Gurk and Amanda Teeley, like you don't get many chances like that on those two. You've got to be quick and react quick to those goals. And they were, and that was really, I think what, change that the, the turning point of that game was they got those two on one matchups. They caught Ohio state lacking on the defensive side and they took advantage with their offense and with those Gators. Yeah. And, and you mentioned, right. Those two on one matchups. And I, I think you're underselling that, that lazy Eden pass too. backhand between the legs, crazy, crazy setup to, to give Casey O'Brien the goal to tie that game there. Uh, I mean, just unbelievable. Plus, you follow that up with, like you said, just another goal immediately afterwards that Wisconsin tallies on just a minute and eight seconds later. That was an, a game changer uh, for, for Wisconsin to be able to just pour it on in a way that, I mean, nobody does to Ohio State. And I say pour it on. With, I mean, scoring two goals a minute is effectively pouring it on to Ohio mm -hmm. State, right? That's all you can get out of it. And I remember talking to you during the game and seeing after those two goals, Nadine Moseral, the, the head coach of the Buckeyes takes an immediate timeout. She was mad. She was not pleased. I don't even know if it was so much mad. I think she was mad, um, but it was 
I mean, at no one on that bench other than her was saying a word. And, and that is the case most times out of these hockey timeouts because they are so short. But it was just she had everyone lined up. And a lot of times, like late in games, you're taking timeouts in hockey. You got the five, six skaters that are going to be out on the ice in that situation. It's those few players huddled right there on the bench. Mm-hmm. This was, hey, everybody, fourth liners to first liners, get your butt in here and she gave it to them for 60 straight seconds. That entire time out was fired up. Obviously, I have no idea what she said, but I have to imagine part of that is just being like trying to remind that team. You have been the best in the country all year long, minus that, you know, lost to Colgate earlier in the year. No one has really challenged the Buckeyes for what they are. And this was the first time all season, the Buckeyes looked, I mean, frankly, a little bit shell-shocked. There was down the stretch of that game that Wisconsin just kind of suffocated Ohio State out and didn't let them get anything set up offensively while Ohio State's trying to come back. Even on the empty net situation, Wisconsin really doesn't allow the Buckeyes any great opportunities to score. This was a a bit of a conditioning spectacle, maybe, but also just an adrenaline spectacle where Wisconsin was able to just put the brakes out there and show they wanted to win that second game. Yeah, they they did it by any means necessary. And and I bet, too, like Coach Johnson being fired up after the first game Uh, would would, would definitely help, would definitely have been the case for game two. I mean, like you texted me that like during game one, how furious he was. Well, that came after Ava Murphy got Ava Murphy got decked early in that game. She like clocked. Yeah, she got knocked to the ice and Mark Johnson was furious, uh, challenges the call looking for the. What what is it? You challenge for the double minor, you challenge for the major. I don't remember exactly the rules. Um in college hockey, but oh challenging for head contact. That's what yeah. it is. So looking for the major. Um and it doesn't go his way on the challenge. And Mark Johnson is just furious in a way where you don't see him get that animated on the bench very often. Uh he is usually much more calm, cool, and collected. He gives a you know bit of like a pouty lip almost I want to say sometimes when he's like looking upset but he doesn't get like furious like that you he wanted to beat this Ohio State team real oh, yeah. bad oh yeah and I mean like that he it's it's kind of a it's kind of right now one of college hockey's best rivalries like mm-hmm. if we can legitimately say it I mean Wisconsin and Minnesota obviously that's a great rivalry just because, you know, it's state versus state. It's like next door neighbor versus next door neighbor. Mm-hmm. But if in terms of like the talent and just like the talent and just the history between these yeah. two teams, the last like three or four years, this is one of the top rivalries in all of college hockey right now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you throw that in there with the transfer of McKenna Webster over to Ohio state too. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's just, Huge. Um, one other thing I wanted to touch on that we talked about in, in the preview of this series was special teams play. Ultimately, special teams play didn't end up making a big difference in this game. There were there were no penalties called during the Saturday game at all that Wisconsin won. Um, and then on Friday, though, I think Wisconsin kind of sneakily dominated special teams. Wisconsin only had the one power play opportunity, didn't score on it, but scored 30 seconds after the power play expired, had three shots on goal. Ohio state had three power play opportunities and only cashed in on the one, which was actually an empty net goal on the power play. So like a power play, but it was five on five play with an empty net. And that was Ohio state's only shot on goal during a power play in that game and Wisconsin's penalty kill really dominated, especially that first penalty kill that Wisconsin was able to, uh, brought in that game, no shots on goal allowed, just never allowed Ohio state to get anything set up whatsoever. Puck got pushed into the neutral zone and then that penalty kill immediately disrupted this Ohio state power play, which I said, if you look at the last month against the middling competition, Ohio state has faced in the bottom of this conference, 
hasn't looked fantastic. And it really didn't look good uh, on Friday night either. This could still be a place that Wisconsin can, can have a leg up against another national title contender here. What does the, the dominance of Wisconsin's penalty kill you know, bring, bring you as you look forward to the WCHA playoffs and then uh, the NCAA tournament? Well, it brings me a lot of positivity. I mean, like it, it, with you look at the one power play that Wisconsin got. I mean, they actually they did. I thought they did pretty well yeah. on the one power play that they got. I think they 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 handled it really well. They took the, the the shots when the shots were there. They moved the puck around. They didn't really give Ohio State too many opportunities to try and and get it out of their zone. And I, I like that was I, I think that was one of the best things that we saw. And and it kind of gave me a little feeling of like, OK, if Wisconsin does play Ohio State again, you know. They, and, and they do get in that situation with this power play, there isn't it. They may have a chance, you know, they may have a chance because they set it. I mean, like they were they were like moving. They were clicking yeah. on all cylinders um, penalty kill as well. They really they really just dominated I think well and they and they brought the pressure they didn't let Ohio State really kind of do anything and you said it like Ohio State's power play the last like month or so has been really bad and Wisconsin I think capitalized on that Wisconsin has played like three teams ranked in the top 10 so they've had to face some really good power plays and this was a case this was a case against you know the Buckeyes this was a case where Ohio State it is a big problem. I, I will say that it is a big problem for Ohio State. And if they run into a team, let, let's say, you know, like a Colgate or a Clarkson where their power plays are a little bit better, it could, it could I, potential upset for the Buckeyes. This could really prove them costly. And so they would have to turn around. I think also for Wisconsin, their power play really firing on all cylinders. And especially the way that they handled it Friday night, even though they didn't get a goal. They handled it pretty well. And they all, I think they, you know, if they had got to go off that, I would have came out of it even more positive as well. Yeah. I, I think the one goal Wisconsin, the goal Wisconsin scored on Friday night came, you know, 30 seconds after that power play expired. I have to think that there is some fatigue factor there for Ohio State after killing that penalty. So not a direct power play goal, but maybe a result of Wisconsin being able to really have a solid power play there. Um, Ohio State, two power play goals in the last month. And after playing Bemidji State, Mankato, and St. Thomas, only came out of that stretch with one power play goal, and the other power play goal was an empty net five-on-five -five power play goal. They scored against Wisconsin. Some real questions about that Ohio State you know, offense right now that wasn't there for the rest of the season. Also wanted to mention uh, the other thought I had when thinking about the way Wisconsin was able to dominate down the stretch on Saturday, not let Ohio State come back again. Gotta think there's something to Ohio State not playing the best and brightest competition that the WCHA has to offer there, uh, not playing real competitive games for for a full 60 minutes like Wisconsin has had to play uh as of late against you know Minnesota last weekend, for example. But uh I as we move on, I want to look at this series, not just talk about the great stuff that Wisconsin did here. I think there is some stuff to clean up here. What, what do you think Wisconsin needs to improve on coming out of this series? It's a split series. You're not going to get a best two out of three against Ohio State at any time going forward, uh, except for this upcoming weekend, the first round of the WCHA tournament. It is one and done from here on. What does Wisconsin need to do to improve on coming out of this Ohio State series as they continue the quest for a national title? Well, it, it's, it starts again with the first period. I, I, they've got to get off to a good first period start and, and not lag and not get slow out of the gate. You look at the game, both games against Ohio state, they were very sloppy coming out of the gate. They, they, they had 19 shots on goal to two shots. How in the world do you not put one in the back of the net against Reagan Kirk on Friday? Fair. Night? Fair. Like that, that's that, that just, you know, that that's unacceptable. Like 19 shots to two and you've got to put at least one in the back of the net. So that was very frustrating. Some of that, I think, is Reagan Kirk really standing on her head. I, yeah. I thought her her rebound control was really excellent and, and something that, I mean, I don't think Wisconsin has out of either of its two goalies. That's the one thing I'd push back on a little bit there. 
Yeah. And that, which that also is very true. But like, again, too, like 19 shots to two, like, like, yeah, you got to bury something. Like, you got to put one, you got to put one in there in that first period. And then just even in day, in, in, in the, in the second game of that series, too, they go down to nothing. Like, that's, that, yeah. that was bad. And they were, they were getting out shot like really badly Real in bad. that first period, in that first period of that game. So they, so they've got to come back out. They've got it. They've got a nice little tune-up game against St. Thomas, where you can adjust, where you can fix those first period problems. You got to get off to that fast start right away. St. Thomas, not a good team in terms of fast starts. This is a great opportunity, a great opportunity for them to try and take advantage because, you know, if they go to the final faceoff, which they probably will, or if they get to the Frozen Four, which they probably will, knock on wood. They've got to have those fast starts and they've got to play well because if you're playing a team like Ohio State or Clarkson, like it is not, they're not going to give you that chance. Like no. Clarkson's a really good team defensively and yep. they just do not let teams score on them after they've scored on them in the first period. Yeah. Um, I like those points. And that kind of brings me to this following segment of our MVPs and NIPs of the series. Give me a most valuable player for Wisconsin coming out of the series and one player who needs improvement uh, coming out of the series. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. MVP. I got to start. I, you know, I'm going with the MVP in goaltending, and I'm starting with Ava McNaughton. I mean, she won Rookie of the Month. She got Rookie of the Month this uh this this past week yep. uh for the WCHA and I got to give her credit the the two games she played against Ohio State played phenomenally really well kept Wisconsin in both of those games and I in this was the case on Saturday she played out of her mind even though she went down even though they went down to oh after that there was nothing there was nothing that Ohio State couldn't do to get to try that could try to even get a, a puck past her. She was a brick wall out there. Yep. I gotta give I, I gotta give Ava McNaughton that one in 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 regards. Yeah, um, totally there with you. And I want to I want to hit on this. She she won Rookie of the Month in the WCHA. Yeah, it's time for me to get on my soapbox. Because oh, I wanted to write this in words. Is I this to write this in words on the internet? You told me this already earlier today. Oh, I did. I did. I wanted to put <laughs> this in words on the internet in written form, but I decided against it because I do not like to bring scathing hot takes like this uh, in in writing all the time. But if yes. somebody wants to come find this, it is here in writing. A Badger did not win WCHA Forward of the Month. The WCHA Forward of the Month was Jenna. Bugli Jenna Buglioni, whose name I am never going to be able to say correctly. From you Ohio got it State. right. You Thank got it you. right. Yeah. Jenna Buglioni of Ohio State had 13 points and seven goals in February. All right. Great. That's a great mark. Again, this is who Ohio State played this month. Bemidji State, St. Thomas, Mankato, and Wisconsin. There is a clear delineation between the top five in the conference of Ohio State, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Duluth, and St. Cloud. And then the bottom three teams of Bemidji State, Mankato, and St. or sorry, Bemidji State, Mankato, and St. Thomas are all bad. Preach. Bad, 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 bad teams. 13 of the points that Buglioni scored this month, of those 13, 12 of them were scored against Bemidji State, Mankato, and St. Thomas. <laughs> the one point she scored against real competition in the conference in Wisconsin was the power play empty net goal. The fakest goal you can possibly score. A five on five empty netter that you score is your one point against real competition of your 13 that you had on the month. Casey O'Brien for Wisconsin had 13 points in February with two goals and assists to beat the to beat the Buckeyes. Kristen, Kristen Sims also had 13 points. 13 points in the month. And one of the points that the WCHA has in its press release about 
Buglioni in her winning forward of the month is that, oh, she had a hat trick against Bemidji State. First of all, whoop de do I could no, I couldn't score a hat trick. It's good. Hey, me. you got three um, goals against Bemidji State. Congratulations. Yeah, you know who else did? Kirsten Sims in the first game of the series. And then the next day in the series, Kirsten Sims followed up by not scoring any goals, but having three assists instead. Unbelievable. Biggest participation trophy ass forward of the month of all time. <laughs> My goodness. Oh. Infuriating. All right. There's my skating hot women's hockey take. You've been, I feel like you were, you were, you've been waiting to say that all day today. I have You're been waiting. deciding all day whether or not I wanted to do it. And I decided to. Um, okay. <laughs> MVP of the series. I had two names written down. One of them. Yes. Ava McNaughton. She almost stole that game. The second game in Columbus back in November. And then she had a career high 33 stops in the win on Saturday. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Wisconsin was outshot in that game again. Like, uh, they, they were in that second game of the series in Columbus that Ava McNaughton played and almost, almost stole Wisconsin outshot 35 to 24 in the game on Saturday that the Badgers won. A lot of that is from the deficit in the first period where um, Ohio State outshot Wisconsin 17 to four. Ava McNaughton, like you said, made some stand on her head saves. One of them that I think of right away is uh, the big save against McKenna Webster, who had a two on one early in the third period. Webster gets all alone in front after like this nuts spinal Rama pass uh, from her line mate from Ohio State. Huge um, gi giant save to, to get that game going. The other player that I would nominate here for MVP of the series would be Casey O'Brien, uh, who of course I just made a case for as WCHA forward of the month in the Saturday win. Casey O'Brien had two goals um, and one assist. She could have had another assist if it weren't for Amanda Teeley making an incredible, like sprawling toe save on Britta curl, that feed coming from Casey O'Brien in the corner. And then the assist that Casey O'Brien had was the most unselfish team first assist that I've ever seen in my life. Casey O'Brien is one goal shy of a hat trick. She is in the offensive zone on a two on one with the net pulled for Ohio state. She could rip it and shoot for that hat trick, but instead she passes to Layla Edwards to guarantee that they're able to put Ohio state away. Totally unselfish team first move. Real, real, real awesome stuff. Uh, for Casey O'Brien in that game on Saturday. I, I mean, in some ways, willing Wisconsin uh, in that game. I, I don't think that, I think that MVP award has to go to Ava McNaughton or Casey O'Brien. Uh, either way, I, I'm there with you. Um, NIP needs improvement player coming out of the weekend. Do, do you have one, Noah? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I mean, it goes to Caroline Harvey. I just... I'll be, I'll be honest. Mm. I'll, I know that, I know that hurts, but it's just, I didn't see a lot of her offensively. This was a kind of a game where I was expecting her to be a really kind of an offensive threat. And she really wasn't. And, and, and it just shocked me. She was great defensively, but offensively when she gets the puck, like she has a chance to ultimately change the impact of a game. And that really wasn't the case. I really think she could improve. I know that I, I'm probably, this is kind of a reach, but I, I'm just saying like against Ohio state, you got it. You got to play better. Got to play better on the offensive side. I don't necessarily think it's a reach. And this was someone that I considered for this label too. She kind of played like a goon out there on, yeah. on Friday and Saturday. She, she was getting into, she didn't get called for a penalty on, on either night, but like she maybe should have on Friday in lieu of uh Britta curl who, ended up getting called for a penalty for mashing minors for roughing after the whistle. Britta Curl got called for a different body checking penalty on, on, on Friday as well. I think one of these two would be who I would say qualifies for this just because you, you don't want to give Ohio state extra opportunities mm -hmm. and Britta Curl kind of got herself in that position on, on Friday with, with a couple of penalties, Caroline Harvey. And I get it. You're, you're a defenseman. You're, you got to play a little bit of the enforcer role, but yeah, Car Caroline Harvey, after they were clearly willing to call some of these roughing calls on Friday, Harvey is skating in after the whistle and, and mixing it up a little bit early on on Saturday, which was just like not something I love to see. Uh, didn't end up costing Wisconsin, but yeah, I, I, 
like I've said, I, I'm not convinced this Ohio State, you know, power play is is all that right now, but there's a chance that offense just clicks and all of a sudden gets rolling is not something that I, I would want to give the Buckeyes a chance to do. So um yeah, NIP I, I would I would give to probably Caroline Harville along with you there. And if only because we set the standard so high for her, right? Um, so maybe a little bit unfair. Would have maybe wanted to see a little bit more for, more from her coming out of the weekend. Uh, any final thoughts on Wisconsin, Ohio State, uh, a, as we wrap up this this huge, uh, absolute banger of a series that we saw over the weekend? I honestly, after watching Ohio State and Wisconsin, there is it's very close to I think at the point where Mark Johnson's going to decide who's going to be goalie for the rest of this postseason, and mm-hmm. it's gonna it's gonna be. And and I'll be honest, I think it might be Ava McNaughton. I mean, she she played really well in in, in all three of the mat or all four of the matchups that she played against St. Cloud State, against Minnesota Duluth. I mean, she did she she kind of was rough against Minnesota Duluth, but other than that, Minnesota and Ohio State in in those matchups, she played really well, and that's against really good top competition. If you take away the Minnesota Duluth disaster. Honestly, I think that I I think she finishes I I think she finishes the season with a really good stat line mm-hmm. going into the postseason. I just think Jane Gervais made a couple really just made a couple really bad you know let up a couple really bad goals. There was a couple saves you know a couple times where she played the puck when she shouldn't have she should have held it. It, it, it. There there was a lot of those situations that we saw for both goalies, but Ava. I think really showed that, you know, maybe Wisconsin has a solid option. I know that hurts Jane because she's been there for three years and this was supposed to be your shot. And now Ava McNaughton's probably outplayed her and maybe, maybe has overtaken her as the number one goalie. I think that that is one concern. I think that's one big thing to look at. Um, The other thing is too, don't be surprised if we see these two teams meet again, you know, about a week later to, yeah. you know, about a week later. And then at the end of March, because that yep. was a really exciting matchup between two really good teams and two really powerhouse programs. And it wouldn't surprise me if we get the national championship in New Hampshire and we get a WCHA, you know, frozen Four national championship yet again with both of these teams. Yeah. On, on the goalie piece, I think it's hard to understate that, Jane Gervais did just win you a national title um, and shut down, shut out the Ohio State Buckeyes in that national title game. Well, it wasn't Jane Gervais. It was Cammie Cronish. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. Never mind. Uh, it's over. Uh, call, <laughs> call it for Ava. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know why I thought it was Jane Gervais for some reason. Um, well, it was supposed to be Jane at the start of the year, she was supposed to get the starting yeah. goalie job yeah, and yeah, she yeah, was, yeah. and then she got hurt and Cammy came, came in and, and yeah. And Cammy came up. and had been sitting behind everybody for three years and never mm-hmm. got even a real chance at the starting gig. And then she came out and stole it. Uh, yeah. And she's that's super right. nice too. I, you know, I've met her in person, super nice person. Yeah. I, the goalie situation is just really, really, really tough. I, I don't know what Mark Johnson is going to do. Clearly Ava McNaughton is still young. I think still makes some, you know, positional decisions maybe flying out further than she needs to to make saves that I are, are difficult but will come with time as she continues to develop but I I don't know what's gonna happen she she's very young but maybe there's more upside there than there is with Jane Gervais it's gonna be difficult um and t- to see and maybe maybe we learn who Mark Johnson gives the starting job to this weekend as Wisconsin has a best of three series on deck against the St. Thomas Tommies, uh, the conference tournament for this women's hockey team starts this weekend. The WCHA first round is a best of three series uh, hosted at the higher seeded team's home arena. So Wisconsin will host St. Thomas on Friday evening and Saturday uh, late afternoon and then a Sunday game if necessary. I kind of doubt it will be necessary, uh, but then the top four teams will advance to the final face-off uh, hosted at the Minnesota Golden Gophers uh, home rink that will begin next Friday. Uh, any thoughts on 
the St. Thomas Tommies as we go ahead. I think Jay, or I think Mark Johnson is going to continue to rotate these two goalies. One of them will get the start Friday. One of them will get the start Saturday, uh, like you said. But any, any thoughts going in against the Tommies? Like I said earlier on, this is the bottom three in this conference is pretty clear cut from the top five. So I do not think Wisconsin will have a hard time dispatching of the Tommies again. Wisconsin has swept them so far this season, uh, taking all four matchups. Any thoughts on the Tommies, Noah? I feel like this is, uh, they're, they're, I don't know if I have too many thoughts about the Tommies. All I know is it's going to be probably a clean sweep. This is going to be a great, like a great tune up game and a great, like, game for Mark Johnson to see, you know, okay, now here's where we really could see, you know, which goaltender is going to get the chance to prove that they could play in the final face-off and the rest of the postseason. I think it also gives him a chance to really figure out what he's going to do on what he's going to do the rest of the way for his team overall. Uh, mm -hmm. Sophie Helgeson out for the rest of the year with a torn ACL. Uh, so that is, mm -hmm. that's really big. They got Katie Kotlowski back. And if you take Sophie Helgeson away, that's their whole lineup now. The rest of the season, they yeah. they, they don't have uh, Claire and Wright, Bella Vassar not playing this year. She's redshirting, and now Sophie Helgeson, she's hurt, torn ACL out for the season. So really, it's going to be the test of you know what can Mark Johnson do now with this depth. You know how is he going to use this depth for this team? And the Tommies are a great test of that. I think they really could figure out, you know, what kind of lines we could have that could be comfortable. Because the postseason, this is where you can test your third and fourth lines and really get and really test your depth overall in the postseason. Yeah, this is true. Uh, this should be an absolute blast of a women's hockey postseason. Looking forward to it as always. Noah, thank you for joining can't wait for for next week as we preview the Frozen Four. Maybe talk a little bit of uh, bracketology going into the weekend even. Whoop, whoop. Uh, I don't think Wisconsin has a real shot at getting that number one overall seed, but maybe the Beavers. Maybe the Beavers will give Wisconsin a shot to take that number one <laughs> overall seed this weekend. Oh, uh, man. Noah, thank you for joining. Uh, please let the folks know where to find more Noah Clark. Yeah, you can find me down on this little, this little box right here. But uh, the you can find me at uh, Clark Rigo on the app, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, you can listen to me on the student section every Tuesday, 6 to 7, part of our Snake Sports Tuesdays. We had Anthony. We have Anthony, Joe, and Chrissy, uh, along with myself on there, talk all Badger sports, along with professional sports as well. And uh, you can catch us on Snap the Pigskin, a podcast that me and Sam do for NFL football. We just had actually – uh, Paul Boyer, who's who uh, is the son of the equipment manager for the Red Wings, come on our show. So that was really exciting to have him on. Um, and then, if you're down to listen, ten seventy the game. I will. I do the. I do the intermission and the post game. Uh, be sure to listen to Paul Brown and, and and Mike Greenhall do all those games. It's quite a blast. Quite a blast with those boys. So that is Noah Clark. Thank you once again for joining. We'll we'll talk to you again real soon, Noah. Thank you. Thanks as always to Noah Clark for joining the show. I I, I mean, Noah, Noah's just a blast. A great person who has grown into a great friend. Always awesome to have him on the show and an excellent insight uh, from, from him as someone who covers the team for his own job. Uh, and he, he and I were talking shortly after we got, got off the interview itself, not enough folks dedicated to, to covering this program, which is the leader in, in the country in national titles and, and deserves more attention. So thank you to Noah for putting the time in with me to cover a program like that. Coming up this week on the show, we're going to preview the Wisconsin men's basketball team uh, as it takes on Illinois in a huge showdown that Wisconsin needs to get a win uh, and a real big quality win to its resume uh, going into you know the thick of March. Uh, we are one day away, uh, and then after that on Saturday, we're going to have an extra special bracketology episode with one of my favorite bracketologists on the internet, uh, talking all things Wisconsin basketball, where the Badgers go from here, and what their floor and ceiling is now, because that loss against Indiana looked awful. So stay tuned to the feed. We're going to have that for you here on the Skinny Scotty Six Pack Podcast.
I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Sixpack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you are here, please leave a review, five stars, kind comments on your podcast platform of choice. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Sixpack. While you're there, hit that subscribe button and smash that bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into the feed on Wisconsin.